All right, guys, welcome. Uh, I'm Swanky Games, and today I'm going to be attempting to bring you a starter guide on Horong. Not to be confused with my full Horong guide, where I will be going into much more details on this character and how he works, uh, which will be dropping soon, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, this is going to be more... Uh, directed towards like new players uh, players trying to switch from modern controls to classic controls uh, or maybe more experienced players looking to pick up Huang as a secondary or uh, an additional character to their rep repertoire to learn uh, so if you guys end up liking this enjoying it or finding it useful or helpful uh please consider liking and subscribing the more that you do the more it helps uh get my videos out there uh for more people to watch uh, which will ultimately allow me to help more people which is what i want to do uh so a couple disclaimers and announcements uh first off first off uh i've started a series where I'm learning every character for about two weeks at a time. So if you guys are interested in me covering a character that hasn't been covered yet, I do a poll beginning every other Friday, typically the weekend before I pick my next character. So please do not be shy. And if you guys are interested in that sort of thing, make sure you guys are voting in those polls so that maybe I'll be covering a character that you're interested in or want to get more information on. Also, I do have my Discord up. It's mostly there to help new players find a community community, so they can get some help learning this game and have other players they can easily meet up with to practice with and help each other learn. Uh, I would also not mind getting some experienced players in there to maybe help them out or maybe get some GG's in with me. Uh, just to have a nice and friendly friendly community of players wanting to help each other out. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, maybe consider checking it out. I'll be putting the link in the description down below. Uh, next thing is, uh, I'm sure there will be parts of this guide that some of you guys are gonna be less interested in or or are already fairly well informed on. So I will be putting timestamps in, time in the description for you guys so you guys can skip around and get to the good stuff or the stuff that you're mostly interested in. Also, uh, do not forget that this is only a starter guide. I will be covering the main topics and moves to help you guys get started with this character. Uh, I'll mostly be covering like the bullet points and then I'll more or less be moving on So if you guys want more details, make sure you guys let me know in the comments It'll help let me know what to clarify on as I'm working on the full guide uh, And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started So before we get too far into things uh, I do want to go over the notations this is going to be very, very big, especially if you're a beginner. If you're experienced and you know what I'm talking about, you can go ahead and skip this part. But this is a starter guide meant for beginners. So if I start saying the notations, you guys may not know what I'm talking about. So this is, and I'm not going to go ask you to go find another video to find out what those notations are. Uh, I got you guys covered here. So if I go in, in here, you guys will see that there's a bunch of icons or whatever. The ones we're going to focus on are going to be your 1, 2, 3, and 4. You guys might also hear me say something like 1 plus 2 or 3 plus 4. You might also hear me say tilde uh, or forward, back, or neutral. There will be other notations to note as well, but those are going to be the big ones, and we will discuss the other not notations as we come across them. But for now, let's go ahead and cover these. So your one is going to be your left punch. It's going to be your 
square on the PlayStation or X on the Xbox. Your two is gonna be your right punch. This is gonna be triangle on the PlayStation or Y on the Xbox. Your three is gonna be your left kick. This is gonna be X on the PlayStation or A on the Xbox. And your four is gonna be your right kick. And this is gonna be circle on the PlayStation or B on the Xbox. Pretty simple, right? So if I say one plus two, this will simply mean both your punch buttons. So this will be square and triangle on the PlayStation at the same time, or X and Y on the Xbox at the same time. If I say three plus four, this will mean both your kick buttons. This will be X and circle on the PlayStation, or A and B on the Xbox. Uh, it is strongly suggested, suggested but not required to bind your buttons, which basically means that you would set uh, one button to hit numerous buttons at once. For example, uh, for Horong specifically, I would suggest uh, binding one plus two, three plus four, and two plus three at, ver at the very least. If you do opt to bind two plus three, I would not suggest binding that as well as Heat Burst, only because uh, characters like Horong have numerous moves out of 2 plus 3, and it is easier just to remember one button in a direction than in, when in the heat of the moment, uh, you're trying to remember what button is specifically is 2 plus 3, and which button specifically is Heat. Uh, it can be quite confusing, especially at first. That's my suggestion. You can do whatever you want. That's completely up to you and fine. Uh, that's just my my shtick. Um, next is going to be Tilda. Uh, these moves will be notated in brackets. Uh, so uh, if I go into his right stance, you'll notice that I've hit three, four. This move comes out correct but I've hit the same buttons in the same order just a little bit faster uh, a whole different move comes out this is known as tilde so basically you're gonna hit one button and then a second button in very quick succession uh, and that will be notated as tilde so again where this would be notated as three four sorry three four this would be notated notated as three tilde four. So uh, that's a big, big thing. Uh, last but not least uh, is gonna be your forward and your back. If I say forward, this will always be towards your opponent. If I say back or away, this will always be away from your opponent. I know this sounds kind of obvious, but the re main reason I'm pointing this out is because if you are on the other side in practicing and you're focused on my command history, you might see that I'm hitting back and think to hit forward because you're looking at my notations. So just make sure that you guys are listening when I say forward or back. Uh, and then neutral, uh, which is basically what we're doing now. It's the absence of pressing a button. Um, so if I go back up to these moves here, you'll notice that all of these are notated with a star. That's your neutral. So basically, if I go to do the move and you look at my command history, you'll notice that I hit forward and then there's a space. That's the neutral. So it won't be notated with a star. It'll just be blank. And then I hit down forward four. So that's how I got the move to come out. And that's how the move works. And there are, are numerous moves amongst numerous characters with notations like that. So that'll be very important to know moving forward. So before we get too far into the guide, let's discuss Horong, Horong's game plan overall. Uh, Horong is a rushdown, pressure heavy character. Uh, built and designed to attack and force an opponent to make mistakes. 
uh, so you can blow them up for making the wrong decisions, such as ducking or trying to challenge you. Uh, this can be t fairly difficult at first uh, because a big part of this is knowing your opponent's opponent's tendencies. Uh, however, uh, even without all that, uh, Horong does have solid pokes to help him whittle away at your opponent's health while you're trying to figure figure those tendencies out. Uh, a couple big strengths he has is uh, obviously his pressure, which is what you guys are kind of seeing now. Uh, lots of plus frames on block. Uh, the idea here is, like I mentioned, trying to force your opponent to make mistakes so that you can take advantage of his second big strength, which is uh, above average combo damage uh, without too much difficulty. A uh, couple big weaknesses include his linearity, moves like his forward forward three, his forward forward four, uh, his JFSR, down three four. These are very, very big tools for Horong. And uh, all these moves are fairly linear. And uh, interestingly enough, another big weakness is that Horong is not the greatest at dealing with pressure himself. He does have a couple things he can use to get out of pressure situations but nothing fantastic so it's interesting because the god of pressure in Tekken himself arguably uh, is quite susceptible to pressure himself for the most part uh, he does have a decent sidestep and backdash uh, however when it comes to actually getting out of pressure situations like when your back's to the wall for example uh, he can have quite a bit of uh, issues getting out of those situations All right, so the next thing I want to discuss are Horong's stances. He has four main stances and two substances. His first stance is the one you guys are seeing him in now. This is known as left foot forward or uh, his neutral stance. Then this is mostly for uh, minor pokes and transitions into your right stances, as well as if you like jump, duck, sidestep, get punched aside from certain exceptions uh, he will end up back in this stance uh, next stance is going to be right foot forward uh, you can enter this stance by pressing three plus four this is more of an aggressive stance uh, this is as you guys might notice if you're in left foot forward his hands are in his face it's meant to look more defensive Whereas when he's in right foot forward, he drops his arm down to his side. It's meant to sh be more of an aggressive stance. Uh, if you, you can do uh, minor dashes, but as I mentioned before, if you duck or jump or sidestep, uh, he will end up back in left foot forward. And the next stance is gonna be left flamingo stance. You can enter this by pressing forward three. <clears throat> Uh, this is just like with left foot forward, left flamingo stance is for minor pokes and entering into your right stances. Uh, keep in mind that in left flamingo stance, you can uh, move back, forward, up and down. But if you stop moving or you get hit, uh, he will end up back in uh, left foot forward. And the last stance is going to be right flamingo stance this can be entered by doing a forward neutral four and just like with left flamingo stance uh you can move in all directions but if you stop moving he will exit out of the stance and go back to right foot forward uh, and just like with just like with right foot forward this is mostly designed for aggressiveness uh there's two sub stances are gonna be his back turn stance. Uh, I know you can see him and he can enter both his stances from back turn. However, uh, I would not suggest consider this two stances because he has access to the same moves either way. Uh, so, you know, bear that in mind. Uh, and you can enter this stance by pressing one plus two, uh, whether you're in left foot forward or right foot forward. And this is just, uh, you have basically a 50-50 mix-up. 
or a three-way mix-up if you really want to be specific with uh, down three, your launchers, and your uh, some command grabs. And your last sub stance is going to be his shark step or his wave dash, if you will. Uh, some people might disagree that this is a stance, but if you consider uh, sways from Paul or Brian stances or the Mishima wave dash from Kazuya or Jin to be any kind of a stance, then this is a stance as well, for sure. If you disagree with me, then you can that. Yeah, if you disagree that shark step is a stance, then you can bite me. Get it? Shark, bite me. Just kidding. Anyway, so to get into to do this, you just gotta hit forward, neutral, down, down, forward, forward. And I do believe that Horong is one of the only characters, if not the only character, outside of the main Mishima bloodline that has an actual, like, pretty much a Mishima wave dash, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. All right, so the next thing I want to cover are his key moves. Uh, one minor disclaimer, uh, I can't really tell you guys how to use these moves. However, I can at least give you guys a handful of tools that you can use and learn to use as you climb through like the ranks and whatnot. Also keep in mind that Horong has roughly 150 moves, give or take, some different variations or just add or copies of other moves. So make sure you guys bear that in mind. Uh, so narrowing this down to a handful was pretty difficult. If a move is not in what I consider to be a key move that does not make it useless, it just means that I have found these other moves to be a, a tidbit more uh, useful. And, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, it's more or less your preference. So keep that in mind. Also, Horong is, you should always check to make sure your character has a uh, 10 frame jab and a 13 frame down forward one. If they do not, a lot of characters, most characters have a 10 frame jab, but not every character has a 13 frame down forward one. If they do not have a down forward one, you're gonna need to check that, but luckily Horong does. So that's awesome. I did not least list these as key moves, but it is important to note. If you are in right foot forward, you can hit forward one to do your 10 frame jab. And you can do down forward one as well from right foot forward. So bear those in mind. Uh, and with that out of the way, let's go ahead and discuss his key moves. The first move is gonna be four three. This is a high mid that is safe. You can cancel the three by pressing forward and it will put you in the left flamingo stance. The frame data does not change. So either way on hit, it will be plus five and on block, it will be minus six. Uh, and the second hit will knock down on counter hit or knock back on counter hit. Uh, next move is gonna be forward one plus two. This is a safe mid that gives you guaranteed follow-ups on counter hit. Uh, and you can also do this from right foot forward. Uh, next move is gonna be down forward two. This is your safe mid launcher. Keep in mind that the range is kind of poor. However, uh, it's probably one of your best launchers and you can do this out of right foot forward. Uh, next move is gonna be down forward four. Uh, this is a safe mid homing move that knocks back on counter hit and will leave you in right foot forward. Very, very solid. Uh, then you have down three, four. This is your main pressure starter, which basically means eight out of 10 times. If you need something to start pressure with, or you just want to throw something out, this is pretty solid. Uh, it is plus 14 on hit. It does 17 damage. On block, it is plus eight and uh, leaves you in a right flamingo stance either way. You can do this as well from left flamingo stance. However, the only difference with this one is that it comes out at 16 frames instead of, instead of 17 frames, which is kind of nice. It's good for like frame traps and whatnot. 
and uh, out of right foot forward. He also has down three forward. The animation looks a little different. Uh, however, it does three more damage. Uh, it comes out one frame slower. And it is a pseudo homing move, which means your opponent has to sidewalk this a very specific way to get out of it. Or low parry it. So very, very good tool. Uh, aside from those minor differences, everything else is the same. As I mentioned, plus 14 on block, or on hit, my fault, and plus 8 on block. Uh, your next move is going to be back 3. This is probably the key move you'll probably use the least, or one of your key moves you'll use the least, but you're still going to use it. It is minus 19 on block, which means it is very launch punishable by, I'm pretty sure, everybody in the cast. Uh, it is mid, and it is a launcher, and it's considered probably number one with Punisher in the game. If not, I'd say top five. Uh, so very, very good. Uh, next move is going to be forward, forward, three. Uh, this is plus six on block or hit, but on hit, this will force crouch, leaving you in right foot forward. So very, very good. Uh, the next move is gonna be JFSR. Uh, this move is very important. If you can't do this right away, that is fine. Do not stress about it. Uh, however, uh, I would still suggest at least practicing the skyrocket. Uh, you'll notice in the move list, this is something I wanted to point out personally, because uh, I had a lot of comments mentioning this issue. So you'll notice, on skyrocket it says forward neutral down down forward four okay that is, the down part is very important because if you look one move down this is the just frame skyrocket but they labeled it different any ho experienced horror player is never going to call it lethal skyrocket it's jfsr and you'll notice that where the down used to be is no longer there. So the notation is forward, neutral, down, forward, four. So you'll skip the down notation altogether. So make sure you guys bear that in mind. While you guys are practicing this, the regular skyrocket is fine. Just make sure you guys have something of a, a backup plan, more or less. And then uh, if you guys practice this from right foot forward, as long as you hit the down forward first, you should be able to get the skyrocket pretty comfortably. Uh, as long as you don't hit the down and you hit the down forward before you hit the four and right foot forward, you should be able to get uh, skyrocket or just frame skyrocket pretty comfortably. Uh, and again, it is safe. It is mid. Uh, it is minus 8 on block, and it is probably top 10 launchers in the game. At least in my opinion. But I might just be biased. Uh, next move is going to be sidestep 4. This is minus 13 on block. Uh, however, on hit, it is plus 5. And on counter hit, this becomes a, a, uh, a, this is a launcher on counter hit. And it, is, uh, it will leave you in right foot forward. Uh, and it will force crouch your opponent to crouch on hit. Which is very, very good. Very ridiculous. Uh, next move is going to be your wall rising 4-4. Four, four. This is just a safe mid-mid check, honestly. On hit, it will leave you at plus 4 uh, with your opponent crouched. On block, it is, I want to say, minus 5. Yeah, yeah minus 5. Uh, so very, very good. Very safe. Uh, and it is probably Horong's main mid main mid mid check. Uh, you can't stop uh, on the on the four itself. As you guys see, it's plus eight on hit. And on block, it's only minus three. So uh, either way is fine. Uh, next, we're going to cover some uh, key moves from other stances. Uh, so in right foot forward, uh, your first key move is going to be forward three. This is going to be your plus on block high. It will leave you at plus 12 uh, with uh, guaranteed follow-up attempts on block. You know what, the, what that means is if I have my opponent stand 
and then crouch, you'll notice that this misses, right? However, if I have him block, he can no longer duck the grab attempt, which means that he has to break the grab. So if your opponent is not super great at throw breaking, or you think you can catch your opponent off guard like this, it is very good to throw out once every blue moon. I love this move. Uh, I love that little gimmick, personally. Um, very, very good. Um, as you guys saw, it, uh, it is plus 12 on, on block. If you guys stand back a little bit, uh, it becomes uh, 15 to 16 frames to come out. Um, and the further back you are, the slower it comes out, the more ju the more frames you have, which is awesome. Um, usually it'll be about 14 to 15 frames. Uh, if it comes out at 15 frames, then your opponent can't cannot duck the jab. They can block it, but they can't uh, they can't duck it, which is awesome on block specifically. Um, and it will leave you in left flamingo stance as well as if you hold back, you can go into back turn stance. Very, very good. Uh, next move is gonna be down four, three. Uh, from right foot forward. This is a 22 frame, so a little on the slow side. Long ass range, low crushing, homing mid. That is plus one on block. Wall splats, obviously. And as a heat engager. This move is ridiculous. I would definitely put this in Horong's top five, for sure. Um, do do do. Next move is gonna be down forward four. This is a safe mid. It is plus one on hit. And it's a minus seven on block. If you hold forward, this is plus 13 on hit, nothing is guaranteed, and it's plus five on block. If you hold up, back, or down, this becomes plus seven, which is very, very good. Uh, and on counter hit, you get guaranteed follow-ups. And in heat, and in heat, this becomes a counter hit launcher. My fault. This becomes a counter hit launcher. So very, very good. Uh, next move is gonna be back two. This is uh, plus on block at plus four. On hit, it is plus six and leaves your opponent crouched. It is mid and it knocks down for a guaranteed follow up on counter hit. Very, very good. Uh, in left flamingo stance, you have your one. Uh, it comes out at 13 frames and it's plus seven on hit. It's plus five on block. This is your fastest, easiest, safest uh, way to get out of left flamingo stance. Uh, and on with it being plus five on block is a natural frame trap. So very, very good. Uh, left flamingo stance two is just basically gonna be your safe mid. That will put you on right foot forward. It is minus two on block and plus nine on hit. Uh, next move is gonna be forward three. This is, this will knock down on, on normal hit. It's plus four on block and is a heat engager. Probably his second best heat engager in my opinion. Uh, next move is gonna be uh, down back four. Uh, this is minus 12 on block. However, on hit it is plus four, leaving you in right foot forward. On counter hit, you get guaranteed follow-ups. So very, very good. Uh, your next key moves are going to be out of right flamingo stance. The first two are basically the same as left flamingo stance. You have your two which is the same as your left flamingo stance one. This is uh, 13 frames to come out, plus seven on hit, plus five on block, and your fastest, safest, easiest way to get out of stance 
And just, just like before, this plus five on block, which is a natural frame trap. Uh, same with the one. It's basically your forward two or your left flamingo stance two uh, is your safe mid check. That is minus two on block, plus nine on hit. Gets you out of stance and into left foot forward. Very, very solid. Next move is going to be forward to four. Uh, this is a counter hit launcher. Comes out at eight frames. Eight frames. The nat is a counter hit launcher and in heat. This is a normal launcher. So very, very good. Uh, last move is going to be uh, from last move from right flamingo stance is going to be your down four. Uh, keep in mind this is minus 23 on block. However, uh, this is still very necessary because uh, you need to incentivize your opponent to duck. You also have down three, which is perfectly fine, but down four is more threatening. Uh, and you ha and uh, down four on hit will leave you at plus seven with your opponent crouched um, and you in right foot forward in your opponent's face. Uh, the follow-up is guaranteed if, this, if the first hit lands. However, it leaves you at minus one in left foot forward, so bear that in mind. And you have a third follow-up that is a high, so it can be ducked, but if they do not duck it, it is minus nine, so it is still safe. Awesome. Uh, and on counter hit, this whole thing is guaranteed. If the first or second hit land on counter hit, uh, the rest of it is guaranteed. For example, and in heat, this becomes a natural uh, string. Uh, some honorable mentions I want to mention. The first honorable mention is going to be three tilt to four. A uh, very, very good tool. Uh, on block, this is minus three. And if you do the just frame version, uh, it is plus one. Come on. There we go. It's plus one. I wouldn't rely on that too much. However, uh, being at minus three, you can uh, do like down back three, for example. Uh, it's pretty good to find out what your opponent's tendencies are, find out what they like to do, and if you can beat it. Uh, forward two. This is basically a key move. The only reason I didn't put it in key moves is because I find myself using left flamingo stance two and right flamingo stance one a lot more than standing forward two, but it's the same frame data. It's minus two on block, plus nine on hit, 16 frames to come out, put you in right foot forward, Still a very, very good tool. Still very abusable. Like I said, the only reason it's in honorable mentions and not a key moves is just because I find myself using uh, the other ones out of stances. Uh, I find myself using those more, and that's literally it. Uh, your next move is going to be forward four. Uh, keep in mind, this is 19 to 21 frames to come out usually. Uh, it can't come out in 18 frames, but I've never, I, I very rarely see that happen. Uh, and I've never seen it come out later than 22 frames. Uh, and just like with forward three, uh, the further back you are when this hits or block gets blocked. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, when it gets blocked, the more plus frames you have uh, on block. Uh, normally, it'll be around anywhere between plus 9 to plus 11 on block, which also means that forward 4 cannot be ducked if it is blocked. And on counter hit, on counter hit, uh, four four is guaranteed, which means that uh, in heat, this becomes a full a full counter hit launcher, which is very very good. So, pretty good stuff. 
Uh, next move is going to be down back three. It is uh, 19 frames to come out, minus one on hit, minus 13 on block. Uh, it is plus 17 on counter hit. Nothing is guaranteed out of this, but your opponent basically is forced to take, take the mix up, and you can do this out of right foot forward. And it's a high crush. So very decent tool overall. Uh, the next move is going to be down back four. On hit, it is minus eight, which is kind of crap. Uh, but on block, it's only minus 12. Uh, if you go into Flamingo by pressing forward or back, it is plus three on hit and only minus one on block. And on counter hit, you get a free forward four, uh, which also means in heat, it becomes a full counter hit launcher. So very, very good. Um, up four is a 16 frame mid that leaves you in right flamingo stance. It is plus 11 on hit and plus three on block. On counter hit, forward four is guaranteed, which also means that in heat, it becomes a full counter hit launcher. Um, next is going to be up four, 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 four. The, the first attack is plus four on hit and minus two on block. The second attack is plus six on hit and neutral on block. And the last hit is plus seven on hit and plus one on block. Another thing to note is that if the mid makes any contact with your opponent's body, whether it is blocked or it lands, the low is unparryable. So leaving you at plus one and essentially a, a non parryable low is pretty good. Um, so, uh, pretty good. The next move is going to be uh, Shark Step 3. So this will be forward, neutral, down, down, forward, 3. Uh, this is a safe... A safe plus, on, plus 4 on block. Uh, I guess mid check it's pretty solid for a get in tool it is still fairly linear but it has a fair amount of tracking because of the shark step so pretty decent and as I mentioned it's plus 4 on block knocks back on hit pretty solid uh, next move is going to be running 3 uh, -do. it is plus 6 on block and on hit Knocks back, knocks down for guaranteed follow-ups. It will also uh, splat them against the wall on hit. Uh, next move is going to be right foot forward, three tilt of four. This move is a little on the slow side. Uh, however, it is a power crush. It is a homing move, and you get guaranteed follow-ups. Uh, it will leave you in left foot forward afterwards. Um, the only reason this is not a key move, in my opinion, is because I really don't think you need it to do well with Horong. It's still a very good move, and if you want to use it, there's not really many downsides to it, aside from it being a little on the slow side. Uh, but uh, I just don't think... It's not so much that it's a bad move, it's just I think you can use Horong effectively without using it at all. That's just me personally. But still a very, very good tool. Uh, your next move is going to be uh, left flamingo stance, up forward four. Uh, it's going to be your main launcher out of left flamingo stance. Keep in mind that is minus 14 on block. Uh, do As well as left flamingo stance, back three. Uh, this is... Uh, your power crush keep in mind it is minus 12 on block however it is uh, a power crush it does have minor very very minor low crushing you guys will notice down there in status uh, it, it might be a little hard to see but you'll see that he's airborne so while the attack is coming out he is actually it is actually harder to hit him with a low and he can't be grabbed either 
And I've actually had situations like that happen previously, which is why I'm mentioning it. It's not something to rely upon. I just wanted to make sure you guys understood that it was there. Uh, and on hit, it leaves you at plus 14, which means you get pretty much a guaranteed follow-up attempt. Nothing's guaranteed, but you get a guaranteed follow-up attempt. Um, and then in right flamingo stance, you have up four at four. Uh, basically, your right fl right flamingo stance la main launcher. Uh, it's 13 frames on block, minus 13 on block. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, oh yeah, it will leave you in right foot forward, which is very important to, to note. Uh, and your last honorable mention is going to be right flamingo stance back four. This is the same move as left flamingo stance back three, just out of right flamingo stance. So same properties, minus 12 on block, power crush, very, very minor uh, low crush, and uh, minus 12 on block, and plus 14 on hit uh, for guaranteed uh, follow-up attempts. Also, do not forget that you have a full grab game with quarter circle back quarter circle back three, which is a one break and will break floors, which is very good. Uh, two plus four back, which is a two break. Up forward one plus two, which is a one plus two break. Forward two plus three, which is a also a one plus two break and can be done from every single one of Horong's main stances. And last but not least, you have uh, either one plus three or two plus four from right foot forward. And this is a one plus two break as well. From back turn, you have a two grab mix up. You can either do two plus four back, which again is a two break or one plus three forward, which is a one plus two break. So make sure you guys bear those in mind. They are very, very useful. All right, so before we get into the, this next part, there is a key move I failed to mention, which is gonna be right flamingo stance, down forward four. As you guys will notice on hit, this leaves you at plus eight with your opponent crouched and a left foot forward. On block, this is plus one. And on counter hit, this will be a full launcher. So bear that in mind. I forgot to mention that in key moves. It is very important, especially when you're trying to stay more compact. It's a nice, easy way to get out of Flamingo. All right, so this next section, all I wanna do is take a quick moment to tell you newer Horongs to stop using certain moves as regularly or trying to abuse them as much as you are. You can still use these moves, but they're just not as good as you would think. And we're gonna get into those right now. Uh, I'm probably not gonna do this for other characters. This is specifically for Horong because he's my main. And when I was going through like yellow and uh, per, re, yeah, blah, 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 yellow and orange ranks, I did notice this quite a bit. So I really wanted to make sure I covered on this. If you guys watch this video, I really want to make sure that if you guys are using these moves, that you understand that these are not as good as you are abusing them to make them look. If that makes sense. So the first move is going to be four, 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 four. This move, yeah, I get it. It's neutral on block, it throws, it pushes them back. Uh, but keep in mind too, this is all highs. If I have my, my dummy Horong here. Uh, no. If I have my dummy Horong here, do this move. You guys will notice one main thing. 
I can duck, stand up, and hit back three very comfortably. Heck, if I really want to, I can punish you with JFSR. Fairly comfortably. It's a little harder, but my point being is that I have enough time to stand up, press forward, neutral, which is the absence of pressing a button, down forward four, and the time it takes you to recover. And even if I don't want to do that, I can still stand up and just simply do back three. Keep that in mind. With this string, you have two other options, which is four, four, four forward, which will put you in right flamingo stance to confuse your opponent. So if your opponent knows the string's coming and you know that they're gonna duck, you can maybe follow up with a different attack. Or if you don't think that they're gonna duck, you can maybe threaten them with a low. Or you have four, four, three, which yes, is minus 14 on block, but if they're ducking you, will knock down and get you potentially a guaranteed follow-up. Holy crap. For example. So make sure you guys are bearing in mind that you have other options other than 4444. Four, four. Uh, another thing to note is uh, down 4-4. Four, four. This move... Uh, it is a mi minus 13 counter hit. Unless you know for sure that you're going to hit this on counter or you're just simply knowledge checking your opponent, this is not a move to abuse three to four times in a match. I literally had a Horong use this four times in one round. I got, they, I blocked it every single time and punished them with four, three every single time that doesn't sound like a big deal until you remember that 4-3 is 30 damage so if i blocked that four times and did 4-3 i did a hundred and you gave me a hundred and twenty damage for free so make sure that if you're using this you only use it a couple times as a knowledge check or if you think your opponent is going to press that is it Otherwise, stop abusing this move. It is not that good. Uh, another one is uh, down forward three, four. This is a minus 12 power crush. Um, it's not the worst move, but some, some Horong players throw it out so mindlessly for no good reason. Do not forget that you can either hold forward to cancel this move and the left flamingo stance, or just do the first attack. If you're not sure it's gonna hit, yeah, it's minus 14 on block, but if your opponent knows that the follow-up is there, they're never gonna punish you. So make sure you bear those in mind. Um, and the, the last thing I wanna mention is uh, forward, forward, four. This is a big one. So, this move right here, again, is not as good as you guys think. Yes, it is a decent get-in tool. It is a decent get-in tool. But here's one major, major flaw. First off, you're at minus seven on block. You have three other really good get-in tools in the form of four, four, three, running three, and down forward three from right foot forward. Granted, the other two are still fairly linear. Oh, and crouch dash three for my for that matter. All are still fairly linear. However, every single one of those options were plus on block, which means you did not give up your turn while trying to get in. This is plus, this is minus seven on block. Your turn is over. So if on top of that, I don't even have to try to sidestep this. 
All that I gotta do is more or less hold sidestep, sidewalk, and that will, it will almost never hit me. What's, like literally, I was accidentally just, I've accidentally sidestepped this move while doing my, while doing my dance thing, like that, for example. And, I, you know, it missed. So not only is it minus seven, it's still safe, so it's still fine. So, but you give up your turn and it is so easy to sidestep that literally all I have to do is accidentally sidestep it. And launch punish you for it. It is so easy. And if, so make sure you guys are bearing in mind that that is not as good as you guys think it is. And a lot of you guys, yellow and orange ranks, really like to abuse this down four, down four four, and forward forward four. They are not that good. Yeah, forward forward four is safe. But you're giving up your turn and taking way too much risk when you have other significantly better options. And that's not even to point out the fact that you have a second heat engager that is plus on block and is a homing move. Which means they could not step this if they, ha if they teleported to the side. This would still hit them. So, with that ran out of the way, let's go ahead and move on. All right, so next, let's go ahead and discuss Horong's punishment. Horong's got pretty decent punishment in this game. Not the greatest, but decent. At 10 frames, you have two, four, or three. Uh, this is for if you're trying to stay more compact. It does 23 damage plus nine on hit, but that doesn't really matter because of the pushback. I think that's a little too much pushback, in my opinion, but it is what it is. If you're trying to stay more compact, 23 damage isn't too too bad. Uh, if you're trying to go for pressure, one, two, three, or one, two, four works. Uh, 15 damage leaves you at plus 12 in Flamingo either way. One, two, three for left Flamingo stance, or one, two, four for right Flamingo stance. At 11 frames, you have four three this is 30 damage uh especially this is good for if you're trying to stay compact remember you can also press forward to go into uh, left flamingo stance you also have four four it does slightly less damage at 27 however it leaves you at plus 10 in right flamingo stance so very solid at 13 frames you have down forward one three Either way, it is plus six on hit, 25 damage. The only difference is down forward one on its own, leaves you in left foot forward, and down forward one three, leaves you in left flamingo stance. You also have uh, down four three plus four at 13 frames. It does slightly more damage at, uh, at 28 damage. Uh, forces crouch. And that leaves you at plus four if you do not go into heat. Pretty solid. Next, you have up four, three plus four, four. You can cancel this into left flamingo and to do pressure, it'll leave you at plus nine. Um, however, if you want to do the whole thing, this 31 damage leaves you at plus seven and right foot forward. So both options are very good. At 15 frames, you have down four, two. And at 16 frames, you have back three. For wall rising punishment, at 11 frames, you have wall rising four, four. Does 28 damage, forces crouch, leaves you at plus four and right foot forward. At 14 frames, you have three, back three for 33 damage. Or three, forward four, three if you're fast enough for 39 damage. So very, very solid. Uh, this might be a little bit trickier to get, but it is still guaranteed, even if you don't see the combo counter. Uh, you just gotta be a little quick. 
but that's what you have back three for if you're not sure. Last and simply not least, you have uh, wall rising to three at 15 frames. Uh, the combo you get out of this isn't great, but it's better than nothing. Um, so pretty solid and that's pretty much it for his punishment. There's a couple of things that I want to discuss real quick before we move on to the next section. These are going to be things to practice. So as you're trying to progress and up, up your Horong gameplay, there is a few things that you guys should practice, mostly to help improve your combos, but this can help you in other situations as well. The first thing is going to be up forward, three plus four forward into three neutral four. So it'll look like that. So the way I would suggest doing this first, just practice up forward three plus four forward by itself. And don't forget that you can hold forward for as long as your heart desires. And just when you're ready to hit up four three plus four, you just simply have to uh, Rotate your thumb a little bit and then hit three plus four. That's it. You can. Sorry. And then uh, same with uh, three neutral forward. Just you can hold forward forever. And then when you're ready, just, just let go of forward for a split second, hit three, and then put your thumb back on the forward. Very, very easy. It's, it might be a little tricky at first, but it's still fairly easy once you get it. The next one is going to be JFSR. I do not mind uh, pointing this out again. Uh, keep in mind that in left foot forward, you do have to be frame perfect. However, while you're learning, it is perfectly fine to do the other version. That is perfectly fine. Keep in mind it is minus 18 on block, but if you're, especially if you're in the earlier ranks, not many people are going to punish you for that so make sure you guys bear that in mind uh, but when you're ready to try stabbing at JFSR just remember that in right foot forward you do not have to press the down forward and the four in the same frame you just simply have to make sure that you don't press down and you hit down forward before you hit the four that's it uh, same frame data just as easy, just as safe as uh, left foot forward JFSR at minus eight. Really, really good. The next thing I want you guys to practice is forward three plus four and a backlash. This is gonna be probably one of the trickiest things to learn out of this whole thing. Not hardest, but trickiest. So you wanna hit forward, hold forward, Hit three plus four. Once you hit three plus four, let go of forward and then hit three tilde four to do the backlash. This will help with a lot of your guys' combos. For example, it'll make doing uh, some bigger stuff significantly easier if you can learn that. Another thing is while we're on forward three plus four, also practice doing a forward three after forward three plus four. I do think this is a lot easier than the backlash, which is why I'm mentioning it second. Because with this, all you, have, you don't ever have to let go of forward. Just hold forward, hit three plus four, and then hit forward three. You never have to let go of forward. So just keep practicing that. And the last thing I want you guys to practice is while you're in heat, do a heat dash move like forward, forward, four, for example, and a running three. The biggest trick to this is as soon as he goes into that running animation, start mashing forward. If you don't start mashing forward immediately, he'll only do forward, forward, three. So uh, 
You really want to make sure that you start mashing pretty much as soon as he starts dashing. But once once he gets into that, you can literally just mash forward as many times as your heart desires until he stops running and then hit three and he'll do running three. It's very, very easy once you get it. But like I said, if you don't mash three immediately, you'll get four, four, three instead, which is still fine. It's just running three is a little bit more damaging. So that's just my suggestion. Um, but those are the main things to practice. So while you guys are, are doing your thing and practicing, make sure you guys are practicing those handful of things. So as I mentioned before, forward, forward, th four, or any other heat engager and a running three. Uh, up four, three plus four forward, and a three neutral forward. JFSR. Four, three plus four, and a backlash. And four, three plus four, and a forward three. And I think that's about it. So let's go ahead and move on. So next, what I want to do is uh, go over some pressure examples. So especially when you're learning Horong, it might be difficult to get into figuring out how to apply pressure. Keep in mind that nothing is ever guaranteed. And when you're doing this, you're more often than not putting yourself at some type of a risk as well. Uh, so make sure you bear these things in mind as you're doing this. However, if you are successful with your pressure, you can get quite a bit of benefit out of it. So let's go ahead and discuss a couple uh, pressure examples. I'll show you the first one. So uh, that's going to be the first one. Also keep in mind, usually you should keep your pressure strings it for uh specifically anywhere between three to five hits this is just like i said pressure examples to kind of get you guys started maybe practice these on your off time so basically what that was is four four three which is plus six on block or hit three four two which is 16 frames to come out leaving at plus five so the down the back two can be interrupted however if that's becoming an issue just remember you have down forward two as well so three four two and the back two which again on block is plus four into down forward four which is 13 frames to come out so this will not be interruptible into two again. Again, this is plus five into that down four two I just mentioned. So it'll look like this. Oh, my bad. Pretty calm, pretty, pretty easy, right? Uh, next one's gonna be to uh, do. Fair, some kind of small, short. So. What I did there was down three, four, two. Then I did another two. The primary reason I threw a second two out there is because some people will try to sidestep you here. And this two will actually track a lot more than you would think. So that's why I would just throw out another two just in case. And then down forward four and the down forward four. Specifically down forward four forward and a down forward four. And again, if you hold back, it's actually plus seven on block. So you can even do if you're fast enough. Um, and if they if they try to hit into you, the down forward four will launch them. So pretty solid. Uh, so again, it'll look like this. All right, my bad. Nothing fancy, just something small and quick and does the job. Last one's gonna be a little bit more crazy. Yeah. 
That was a lot, right? So what did I do there? So first thing I did was three, three forward. This will leave you at plus two. Your fastest move out of three, three forward on block is your 13 frame jab, which is why I opted to do the power crush. So if they do try to hit into you, even with a crouch jab, you will absorb it. Then I did uh, three, four, one. This is your, I guess, mid high. The high can be ducked, but usually when that mid, when they get hit by that mid, they'll stop ducking and try to block. So that's a big deal. So once that four hits, you hit one, it's your mid check. If it's blocked, you're at minus two, which is why you would do down back three. If they try to do any kind of a high whatsoever, like a jab, you'll beat it. And if you do not get hit, do not counter hit them, you'll be at minus one, which is why I do sidestep four. So it gives you that plus five back. And then down forward, four forward, and up forward four. Obviously up forward four is minus 13 on block, but like I said, this is just for fun, so. So those are just a few examples. Uh, I do have a full pressure guide on getting into pressure. So if you guys wanna see more examples, Go ahead and check that out. I will put the link into the in the description so you guys can check that out if you want to. Um, with that out of the way, let's move on. All right, so next we're gonna discuss a few combos and combo routes. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys uh, three or basically six launchers, two of each will basically be the same combo route so like for example down four two and back three are gonna be one launcher uh do, do, do. up three plus four and counter hit down forward four are gonna be another launcher and uh another launcher is gonna be right foot forward Forward, four, tilde, four. I know that sounds like a lot, but. And then, uh, do right flamingo stance, up forward, four. Are gonna be your six main launchers that you're probably gonna use, but for the most part, every two, you can do the same exact combo four. Uh, so the first combo is gonna be off of down forward, two, or back three. So you will do, after the launch, you'll do four and four, up four, four. Pretty comfortable. So it'll look like this. And then the ender, it can pretty much be whatever you want. I find the best one to be hunting hawk, which is up forward three, four, three. So it'll look like this. And then if you guys remember before, I told you guys to practice doing forward three plus four and a forward three. This is gonna be where you can maybe start applying that practice. If you do that exact notation, you can get that little bit of extra damage, which is very, very nice. Next, I'm gonna show you guys a heat version. So you'll basically do the same combo and then go into heat. From here, you'll do forward, forward, four. Oh, my bad. Forward, forward, four. And a forward, forward, three. So all together, it will look like this. Not too bad, right? So here, what you guys can practice doing is that four, three plus four and a backlash. And then you'll do a quick dash and a heat engager. From there, you'll practice doing four, three plus four and a four, three again. And then you'll hit four, three again to do your heat burst. So it'll all look like this. Yeah. 
You can either do a uh, forward forward three or a running three. So pretty solid. Like so. Next, I'm gonna show you guys a rage combo from this combo. And it's pretty much the same thing. You'll just basically do Hunting Hawk, but instead of doing the last hit, you'll stop after the second hit and do Rage Art. And what's interesting about this is you don't even have to wait for him to land. As soon as you hear that he makes contact, just hit the Rage button. Super, super easy. So it'll look like this. Or if you want to add that four, three plus four, four, three, you can get that little bit more damage as well. Pretty comfortably. So next, we're gonna be doing a combo from up three plus four or counter hit uh, down forward four. So the combo is gonna be either one of those launchers and the down back four forward, two, forward three, up forward three plus four forward and up forward four. So it'll look like this. Like that. Like so. And they do the same damage, so it doesn't really matter. And pretty much from there, you can end it however you want. Seven hits is kind of the magic number. There is one thing to note, however. So, at seven hits, if you try to do the Hunting Hawk, the last hit will not connect. Oh, my bad. Uh, so that last hit will not connect. I don't know why I didn't just do it. So what you'll have to do is stop on the second hit of right of Hunting Hawk, go into right Flamingo, and then do up forward three, if you wanna do that version. So it'll look like this. Like that. Pretty simple, right? So basically with any combo that's seven hits or more, you should try to practice doing forward three plus four forward. So it'll be an act, you'll actually dash, but you'll hit three plus four either on the first or second forward. It does not matter. Stop pressing forward and hit three tilde four for backlash. Uh, this will be that thing I mentioned to practice earlier. So you can get something that looks like this. Once you get that, you can either do forward, forward, four. You can do, you can dash in and do up, back three. And if you uh, are ballsy enough, you could try doing running three, which is all, which are all possible enders. Like so. Uh, but I, w I probably wouldn't try that version. It is harder and a lot more inconsistent. Sorry. I find this to be the easiest version. Gets you 70 damage, pretty comfortable. So next we're gonna do a heat version. Basically the same thing. It's just, you'll hit forward, you'll uh, do backlash. The same thing, you'll do forward, three plus four forward into backlash. Then you'll dash and do heat engager. So it'll all look like this. And what you're gonna do here is you're gonna actually go 
do four, three plus four, four, three, four, three, and a running three. So pretty much the same thing as before. You get yourself a pretty, pretty sizable chunk of damage. Last, but simply not least, the Rage version. So, pretty much the same thing as before. You can do Hunting Hawk if you want to, uh, for example. It's very possible, very doable. Uh, however, another thing you can do is Backlash into Rage Art or 4-3. Uh, uh, into Rage Art as well. Those are all viable options. For example. <clears throat> Alright, so for our last combo route, is going to be off of forward four tilde four, this move, or uh, right flamingo stance up forward four. And th again, this will all work. And what you're going to do here is a uh, four three and a two, and a four three again, up four three plus four forward into uh, up four four. Keep in mind that in doing a forward four neutral four or tilde four, uh, you'll have to wait until they're about where your head is before you throw out your attack. Otherwise, the, uh, the two will miss. Like so. So you gotta wait for their head, that, that foot to about hit your head. Otherwise, it's still very consistent. Um, and then the enders are all basically the same. Uh, you can end it however you want. So, for example, is a pretty solid option. Um, and that ender was just four three and a four tilde three. Next is going to be your heat combo. And you can pretty much just do the same thing as you did before. Pretty, pretty solid and pretty good damage for that matter. And last but not least is going to be your Rage Art combo. That last part was just me being cheeky. But at the end of the day, it's all the same. It'll get, I think it's, I don't even think it's different. I don't even think it'll change the, the damage for that, honestly. I could be wrong. It might be very, very minor, but. So without the jab, it's, to less damage but still 90s can't complain so with that out of the way let's go ahead and do our last section all right so for our next thing we're going to discuss uh, wall enders so these will be combos where you would typically uh, end at the wall Keep in mind that there are other situations such as a balcony break, for example. Uh, one common answer to help you guys get deal with like special uh, situations would be up back three is always a good option. So for example, if I balcony break here, Up back three is always a solid option. So just bear that in mind as you guys uh, can uh, do your thing. Uh, however, for regular wall enders, 
Uh, what I'll be doing for a combo is back three, four, four, up four, four, and uh, four, three plus four, four, three, up four, three plus four, and up four, four. Or, uh, yeah, up four, three plus four, and then cancel the last part. So. And from here, you have three main wall enders you're gonna do. The first one's gonna be shark step three and a three four four, or shark step three and a three two. It does not matter which version you guys do, and either and both options are always an option for all his wall enders, if that makes sense. So at the end, it'll look like this. Like so. The next one, wall ender, is gonna be uh, four, three plus four, and a four, three. Four, three again, and then your ender. So it'll look like this. Pretty solid, right? In the last version, this is probably the most or the least consistent uh, against females specifically uh, if they're high up on the wall this will still work but if they're low like normal uh, the two right here will miss but basically this next wall ender is going to be a four four two into four three and then either three four four or three two so it'll look like this pretty simple and with that out of the way, we are finally at the end of our guide. So I want to thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate you guys stopping by. If you got again, if you guys found this useful, please make sure you guys uh, like and subscribe. The more that you guys do, the more uh, other people would see my videos, and I can help more people. And I think that's it. So I want to thank you guys again. Appreciate you guys stopping by. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Happy gaming and peace.